Let's talk about Midjourney's seed parameter and what it can teach you about how changes to your prompts affect the final results. This video was voted for by my Patreon community. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna check that out. Let's start with the basics. Each Midjourney job begins with a canvas of visual noise. Think of it like TV static. Each noise pattern is linked to what's called a seed number. When you submit a job, a seed number is randomly assigned by default. That's why if I run this bird prompt multiple times, I get completely different image grids each time. Each of these image grids started with a different visual noise pattern. But what happens if you start with the same visual noise pattern each time? This is what the seed parameter allows you to do. Here I'm using seed 1111. You can pick any number from zero all the way up to about 10 billion. This tells Midjourney to start with whatever visual noise pattern is linked to seed 1111. When I run that same prompt a couple more times, we get fairly repeatable results. Notice how we can match birds across the different runs. Running the same prompt with the same seed number won't always yield results that match up this well. For example, changing the speed mode can sometimes affect the outcome. These were all run using fast mode. If I run that same prompt in relax mode, I get these results. We can still match three out of the four birds, but here we have a new bird. So while using the same seed number gives you similar results each time, it doesn't guarantee identical results each time. Different factors like the model itself, other parameters, and sometimes the speed mode can all introduce small variations. But using a seed number gives you a predictable starting point and the high level of consistency or repeatability in the results is what makes seed numbers so valuable. The real power though doesn't come from running the same prompt with the same seed number over and over, but it's when you use the seed parameter to investigate how specific changes to other parameters and prompt text affect your results. For this reason, I consider seed to be more of an advanced parameter. Let's use the seed parameter to learn how stylize affects results. The stylize parameter controls how heavily Midjourney's default aesthetic is applied to your images. Here's my starting prompt. I chose to use seed 33. The number doesn't matter as long as we use the same one for each prompt in the test. And here's what the results look like if I just use the default stylized value of 100. You can check your default values in your settings menu, but 100 is the common default value for stylize. So the question is, how would these results change if I increased or decreased the stylized value? By keeping the same seed number, we ensure that each job starts with the same visual noise, letting us isolate the effect of changing the stylized value. I ran six different stylized values from zero to 1000. And in these results, as stylized increases, the images become brighter, the woman's face becomes less obscured, and Midjourney's beauty bias becomes more evident. And if you look closely, we can actually trace specific images across these different grids. When I pull these images out of the grids and put them side by side, you can more clearly see how this image evolved as I increased the stylized value. Having these intermediate values helps us make those connections versus just running zero and 1000 and trying to guess which images are connected. Being able to see this evolution is probably the most satisfying part of this kind of prompt testing for me because it lets you see exactly how changing the value of a single parameter affects the outcome. Including a seed number is also a great way to understand how a personalization code affects your results. Here's a basic example where I prompted for a lighthouse using the same seed number for both prompts. But in one prompt, I added my V7 global personalization code and the other, I just used the default Midjourney style. My global personalization tends to bring in teal tones and a bit more atmospheric lighting. If you want to identify the specific aesthetic changes that your personalization profile brings to the results, try running several prompts with a fixed seed number with and without personalization and compare. So stylize and personalization are two examples looking at how parameters affect results, but you can apply this same testing approach with prompt text as well. Changing film types is a good example. Here's my base prompt using seed 1111, and I ran it with six different film and camera variants. So I'm focusing on this part of the prompt. You don't wanna to change too many things at once if you wanna be able to track images across the different results. And with this test, I was able to pick out this same woman across the different image grids and see the impact of those film and camera phrases on the results. Another application of the seed parameter is comparing different versions within the same major model. 
For example, comparing results for the same prompt and seed number in version 6.0 versus version 6.1. 6.1 is known for having a more pronounced beauty bias. The faces often appear smoother and less aged compared to 6.0. This approach works well for comparing minor version updates like this, but is less effective when you try to compare major model jumps like V6 to V7. Each major new model interprets things differently from the previous model, and for that reason, it's often difficult to pick out those matching image pairs for direct comparison. Now that you've seen some examples of how powerful using the seed parameter can be, you might want to try this with some images that you've already created. So here's how to find the seed number for any mid-journey image grid that you've generated. If you're working on Discord, right click on the image grid, go to add reaction and select the envelope emoji. You might need to click view more to find it. This will send you a direct message where you'll be able to see the seed number. On the website, if you're on the create page, go to more, copy, and then seed, and that will copy the seed number to your clipboard. On the organize page, open an image. This needs to be an image that is part of an original image grid. You can confirm that by making sure that it says imagine right here. Then click the three lines up here, copy and seed. With this seed number copied, you can now run modified versions of the original prompt to see how different parameter or text changes affect your results. Just paste the seed number after the seed parameter in your prompts. If you'll be running multiple prompt tests, I highly recommend trying a permutation prompt. Permutation prompts let you submit multiple jobs at once using a single prompt. Here's how they work. Place comma separated items inside a pair of curly brackets and Midjourney will run a separate job for each item. For example, to test different film types like I shared earlier, submitting this prompt will run six different jobs or use it with a parameter like stylize and run multiple jobs at once that way. Or you can combine text and parameter permutations like I did here to test different prompts with and without my personalization. Just remember that permutation prompts only work in fast or turbo mode and not relax mode. So keep an eye on those fast hours because they can go quickly. Seed is kind of a nerdy and technical parameter to learn and most people will never need to use it. But if you're really interested in understanding how adjustments to prompts affect Midjourney's output, it's a really valuable parameter to learn. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining my Patreon community where I share monthly prompt collections and mid-journey guides. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.